how do we know if a chemical reaction has happened? Well, if we were able to look at the atoms and molecules, it would be very easy to tell, but we can't. And so we have to look for clues. Um, what we would see, if we could see the particles, is we would see atoms combining with other atoms to form compounds. We would see the starting molecules decompose or come apart. We would see new molecules form. And we'd see atoms in one molecule change places with atoms in another. I just had this idea, a flash of inspiration. My kids used to make these stop motion animation films with Legos. And I talk a lot about atoms being like Legos. And it just occurred to me, I could make a stop motion animation of a chemical reaction with Legos. I'll do that in my spare time. Of course, I don't have any spare time, so it's never going to happen. But it would be really cool. Mm -hmm. I might be able to get one of my sons to do that. Because today is both of their first day of school. One is a, so a big, he's not a sophomore, a junior in college. And the other is starting graduate school today. It was pretty exciting. They sent me pictures. It was awesome. Anyway, that was, that was way off track. We can't see them. We can't see what's happening, so we need some clues. So there are four different pieces of evidence that suggest a chemical reaction has occurred. These are not foolproof. There are exceptions. But generally speaking, if we see one of these things, it's a chemical reaction. So if there's a color change. Example is this child's spoon. Um, there's plastic on the spoon, and it's a heat-sensitive plastic. And when you put it in water that's too hot, it changes color. A chemical change occurs. Now, this happens to be a reversible chemical change. If you let it cool down, the color returns to its original color. But these are great. Um, somehow I managed not to kill my older children. We didn't have these fancy things. This lets you know, hey, stupid, you warmed up the food too much. Don't put that in your baby's mouth. You're going to burn their tongue, right? That's what those spoons are, are really good for. Color change, evidence of a chemical reaction. Formation of a solid. In this picture here, we have a, a clear yellow liquid and a colorless clear liquid, and you pour them together, and you get this rust-colored solid that forms. It seems like magic, but it isn't. It's just chemistry. We get a solid forming. So if you have solids forming in previous, previously clear solutions, that's evidence of a chemical reaction. Formation of a gas. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Right? You drop an Alka-Seltzer in water, and it bubbles and fizzes. Those bubbles are a gas being released from the Alka-Seltzer tablet. There was not a gas present before, and now there is. A gas is being formed. That's evidence that a chemical reaction is occurring. And the last one involves heat or light. Okay? Heat being absorbed heat being emitted, or light being given off. Here we have a burner, a natural gas burner. We can see that it gives off some light, and we know from experience that it gives off a lot of heat. That heat being released tells us a chemical reaction is occurring here. You may have used one of these instant cold packs. It's got a little pouch inside that you feel around, and you break it, and then you squish it around, and it gets cold by magic, right? It's chemistry. There's a reaction occurring that is absorbing energy from the surroundings, making the surroundings colder than they were before. That's evidence of a chemical reaction. The instant hot packs that you might use um, when you're skiing or something to keep your hands warm, those are also a chemical reaction. And then glow sticks. My kids love glow sticks. There's a little glass tube inside the bigger plastic tube. And when you break it, the two chemicals can mix and then it, light is released. Again, it appears to be magic. It's a chemical reaction. And here's just a little tip. If your glow stick is still glowing and it's time for bed, stick the glow sticks in the freezer. That will slow the reaction way down. And if you pull them out the next day and let them warm up, they'll glow some more instead of wasting all that fun glowing while you're sleeping. Of course, my 
freezer is this littered with glow sticks because they do that and then they forget to take them out and look at them the next day. And you know, if, they, if you leave them in there indefinitely, it won't stay forever. It'll only stay for a couple of days, but still. Now some of these things can fool us. Here's a picture of water boiling. It looks like bubbles are being formed. A gas is being formed, right? A gas is being formed. Is it a chemical reaction? No. No, this is a state transformation. It's going from the liquid state to the gas state. It's not a chemical reaction. So we've got four things to look for, but we need to be careful. And then sometimes you can have a chemical reaction occur, and there's nothing that you can figure out with your senses to indicate that that was actually a chemical reaction. So let's try this skill builder. Uh, which changes involve a chemical reaction? And then that deadly word, explain. Explain your answers. Don't you hate that on labs? Explain why. Butane burning in a butane lighter. Is that a chemical reaction? Yes, yes it is. What makes you think it's a chemical reaction? It gives off heat and light, very good, so yes. Um, gives off heat and light. What about butane evaporating out of a lighter? You flick the BIC, but not fast enough to actually ignite it. No, not a chemical reaction. Because the butane that's evaporating, a state change is not a chemical reaction. If you trapped the butane and caused it to condense again, you would be able to tell that it's exactly the same stuff. How about wood burning? Chemical reaction? Yeah. What's the evidence? Heat and light again. How about dry ice subliming? Do you know what it means to sublime? It means to go directly from the uh, solid state to the gas state without melting. That's why it's dry ice. It doesn't get wet. So it's changing from a solid to a gas. Is that a chemical reaction? No. Again, that's a state change. So dry ice subliming? No. Just a state change, and I'll put that as the explanation. And then this one up here, that's also a state change. So answering questions like this, there will be probably at least one of these on, it on the next exam. Again, I try not to trick you. Sometimes I inadvertently trick you, and I apologize in advance. The words, the verbs here are big clues. Burning, that's combustion. Something burning is a chemical reaction always. Evaporating, that's describing a state change. Subliming, that's des describing a state change. And then burning again. Okay, any questions?